How's it going guys? And welcome back to another ASMR video. In tonight's video, I am going to be reading some brain teasers and tricks as well a few fun riddles in what I call questions you will always get wrong and this is not a hundred percent true but this is in the hope you know that at least a few of these questions will stump your brain and trick your mind to which if they do then be sure to let me know by dropping a big up on this video and if you do enjoy videos like this then why not subscribe it's completely free and we're trying to reach 50,000 subscribers at the moment so be sure to subscribe and drop a comment down, be down below letting me know which tricks or questions fooled your brain anyways let's just get started shall we so I do have my phone, to which I have a compilation of questions that I'll be reading from a website. Um, I will pop the link to this website in the description. So if you want to go and try them all out, because I won't have time to read every single one, but I'll read a good handful of them, and um, after I've asked them, I will give you guys a wee while to think about it. I will also even guess them myself, um, because some of these I might not know, and then after we've made our guess, we will look at the answer together, so let's get into the first brain teaser. Are you ready? Then let's begin. A man pushes his car to a hotel and tells the owner that he is bankrupt. 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 Why? Again, a man pushes, pushes his car to a hotel and tells the owner that he is bankrupt. Why? Okay, I think I know this one. I think we're starting off pretty easy tonight. I'll give you a wee moment to have a think to yourself. Whenever you do these, you have to think carefully about not only the wording, but sometimes about the logic behind the question. So pay really close attention. Have you got it? Well, I'll tell you my guess. My guess is that the man is playing Monopoly. Monopoly, Monopoly, Monopoly. Which would mean he is the token, the car in the game. And he moved it along to a square that has a hotel on it. Unfortunately, and he was not the owner, so he had to bankrupt himself to that player. Let's take a look. If I scroll down, yay! The answer says he's playing Monopoly. Playing Monopoly. Now there is a link that says try out some of these visual brain teasers, do maybe I have to do a part two to this where I do some visual ones, which could be quite exciting. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, the next one. You are in a room that has three switches and a closed door. The switches control three light bulbs. Light bulbs. On the other side of the door, 
once you open the door. You may never touch the switches again. How oh, can you definitely, definitely tell which switch is connected to each of the light bulbs? Okay, so let's think about this. So, you're in a room with three switches. I'm assuming that each switch links to a different light bulb. You're only allowed to touch the switches once. Um, and you've got to work out which switch is linked to each light bulb. Oh, this is a tricky one. Um, I've, I've heard a similar one, but I, I don't think I can work this one out. Maybe you do something like... Um, you could... You could turn on, if you turn on two of the switches, you could maybe head through to the room after a certain amount of time. Oh, no, 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 I think, I think I've worked it out, I think I've worked it out, because I've heard a similar one to this before. So I believe if you turn on two switches and wait, say, five minutes, then or 10 minutes, whatever, then turn those two switches back off and turn the third switch on. It's when you open the door, right? Yeah, so then turn the switch that you didn't turn on, on, and head through the door. Now, doing this, you can work out which one is the light bulb switch that turns on. Um, so if you head through, does it say that only one light bulb works? No. So when you head through, the light if one of the light bulbs is on, you know that the one that you turned on is linked to that one. And from the other two, you can feel the temperature. I think I've heard this one before, but I don't quite know it, so I'll just get to the answer for you guys. So the answer is, turn on the first two switches, leave them on for five minutes. You have heard this one, kind of, but I don't fully really get it. Once five minutes has passed, turn the second switch, leaving one switch on. Now go through the door. The light that is still on is connected to the first switch. Oh, okay. Whichever of the two is warm to the touch is connected to the second switch. The bulb that is cold is connected to the switch that was never turned on. That's smart. That's very smart. So you turn two on. Wait five minutes. Turn the first one off. And the... And then keep the second one on. Then head through and there'll be two light switches off, or light bulbs off and one on. The one that's on is the one that you left on and out of the two that are left, whichever one's warmer, is the other one. That makes a lot of sense. That was good. That was, that was tough though. Hopefully you guys kept up with that one there. The next one is, I left my campsite and hiked, hiked, hiked. Hiked south for three miles. Then I turned east and hiked for three miles. Then I turned north and hiked for three miles. At which time I came upon a bear inside my tent eating my food. What color was the bear? What? What? That makes no sense. I didn't say anything about the color of a bear. <laughs> Do you guys know this one? He left his campsite, hiked south for three miles, so he's gone down south. Now this might be flipped for you, but for me that's down south. Then he went east, which again might be flipped for you, but that's that way for me for three miles. 
then went north for three miles. So he's going to be three miles more east than he started, right? How on earth does he end up at his camp again? This one. I'm clueless. I'm clueless. I'm clueless. I'll give you guys another few seconds to work it out. Are you ready for the answer? So the answer is apparently white. <clears throat> the only place that you can hike three miles south, then east, and then north for three miles and end up back at your starting point is the North Pole. Polar bears are the only bears that live at the North Pole and they are white. Ah, okay. That makes a lot of sense now. That makes a lot of sense. Because if you're in the North Pole and you keep going um, like north, you'll end up going south and then go east for three kilometers and just go north again, you'll come back to the same point. Wow, that's tricky. That's tricky. Although I always remember hearing polar bears technically aren't white. They're transparent or something like that. All right, number four. Will this question fill your brain? A man is looking at a photograph of someone. His friend asks who it is. The man replies, brothers and sisters, I have none. But that father's, oh no, but that man's father is my father's son who was in the photograph. So he's looking at a photograph of someone, so there's a person in this picture. And he says that he has no brothers and sisters. But the man in the picture's father is his father's son. So his father's son would be himself, right? Or if he has no brothers, right? Or like his stepbrother, I don't know. His father's son is himself. So the man in the picture's father... The man in the picture's father... Is, is, is himself, so that he is the father of the man in the picture. So the man in the picture must be his son, right? You see how I've come to that conclusion? I've kind of worked backwards, hopefully. You guys kept up with that if you didn't know it. But I think the man in the picture is his son. Which I'm gonna go with as my answer. I'll let you guys have a wee think though, just in case I might be wrong. But there's a high chance I am. <laughs> Mainly because I've not heard of this one. Okay, are you guys ready for the answer? The answer is... His son. Yeah, his son, his son, his son, his son. I like that one, that was good. <coughs> okay, so here's an interesting one. What is special about the following words? Job, polish, and herb. Job, polish, and herb. I, I don't know what is special about them. Can you guys think? I honestly can't think of anything for this one. Guys, a wee moment. What is special about the words job, 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 polish, 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 and herb, herb, herb? Do you guys know? Are you ready for the answer? The answer is they are all pronounced differently when the first letter is capitalized. Oh, so they are. So they are. But I'm not clever enough to work out what 
Job and Herb are with a capital J and H. I know Polish becomes Polish, which is clever. But what is Job and Herb become? Am I being an idiot? <laughs> Let me know in the comments if I'm being an idiot. Job, but with a capital. Does it become Job? I don't. I honestly don't know. Oh well. Either way, that's quite clever. Or maybe I'm not clever enough to understand it. I don't know. The next one, we'll move on to the next one. I'll stop embarrassing myself. Riddle number six. Forrest left home running. He ran a ways and then turned left. Ran the same distance and turned left again. Then ran the same distance and turn left again. When he got home, there were two masked men. Who were they? Gosh, these are really upping in difficulty now. Really upping in difficulty. I'll read it to you guys again. So, someone got Forrest. I assume Forrest Gump. Uh, he left home running. So he was at home and he left and he went running. And he ran a particular distance in one direction, then turned left and ran the same distance, and then turned left again and ran the same distance again, and then turned left again when he got home. I'd assume that he ended up at home. There were two masked men. Who were they? So he left home running, turned left, ran the same distance, turned left, ran the same distance, and then turned left. And when he got home, there were two. When he got home, maybe it's not home as in his house. Maybe it's home as in, I don't watch a lot of baseball, but I know that they call the first base or the home base is home. Maybe. So he ran, then turned left. Yep, went to the top base, turned left, go to the last base, turned left. And when he got home, the two masked men were the, the person who catches the ball if he doesn't hit it. And the person that catches the ball on that home base, right? I, I don't know. I don't know. Let's look at the answer. Um... The answer says the catcher and the umpire. Okay, so that leads me to believe, I mean, I've not watched a lot of baseball, so I don't know who the umpire is necessarily, but I think I'm on the right lines with that one. Let me know if you guys knew that one. And if you know much about baseball, please let me know who the umpire is. All right, next up. <coughs>
guys know, I'll give you a few more seconds to think because I don't know, so I'm interested to find out. What do you guys think? Let me tell you the answer. So the answer is the river was frozen. Oh my goodness. That is genius. That's so clever. I think that's my favorite one so far because since the river is frozen, the dog just walks across. Probably a bit slippery, but it doesn't get wet because of the ice. That's pretty good. Okay, so the next one says, in 1990, a person is 15 years old. In 1995, the same person is 10 years old. How can this be? So, in the year 1990, someone is 15 years old. And then five years later, the same person, it's important that it says the same person. That same person is five years younger and they're only 10 now. How on earth could they get younger as time goes on? Unless it's something ridiculous. Like, this is where right now we're in the time zone, like the, the time scale AD, right? What if this is like BC and it's like before zero? So it's really, really long ago. And obviously time's getting closer and closer to zero. So the numbers are getting smaller and smaller. So 1995, they're 15. Oh no, 1990, they're 15. And then 1995, which was five years ago, yeah, they would be 10. But that, that feels too stupid, what else could it be? How could that person get younger, unless we're watching that movie, what's it called, Benjamin Button, I don't know. Um, I really don't know, I really don't know, let's take a look at the answer. Oh, I was right, I was right, oh, well, kind of. Yeah, no, I was right, the person was born in 2005 BC. So if they were born in 2005, 15 or 10 years later, it would be 1995 BC, to which they'll be 10, to which five years later it'll be 1990 and they'll be 15. That's really good. I like that one. I like that a lot. Brain teaser number nine. I think we'll just do 10 tonight. A sundial has the fewest moving parts of any time beams. Which has the most? What? A sundial has the fewest moving parts of any time piece. Which has the most? Okay, this is a trick, so I'm probably missing something. But if we're listing, you know, different time pieces. You've got all sorts of different clocks, right? It's probably some weird clock that the answer is. The answer is probably like a particular clock, but I don't know why. Maybe it's like an alarm clock because it has the most electronics or I don't know. Something that measures time, like a stopwatch. Doubt it. What else measures time? What measures a time? A watch. Um, I, I actually can't think for this one. Do you guys know which timepiece has the most um, moving parts? A sundial has the fewest. Well, if you haven't got it yet, here comes the answer. So the answer is... An hourglass? No way. Let me tell you the reasoning why. An hourglass has thousands of grains of sand. You know, that one's kind of annoyed me because... Look at this. Right behind me, I have an hourglass. <laughs> and you can 
see there are lots of little grains of sand or whatever that is in there. I maybe should have got that one right. <laughs> right, let's put that back down. And we'll move on to the last one of the night. Are you guys ready? Well, hopefully for this last one, you can get it right if you haven't got any so far. What makes the following number unique? Okay, it's a big number, but the number is 8,549,176,320. I'll, um, I'll put it on screen for you now so you can see it, but that's a pretty big number. Eight five four nine one seven six three two zero. What makes it unique? So I'm looking at it here. I can't see the answer. Don't worry. Let's let's look at this number together. So it has all the digits from zero through nine. I can see. Um, eight five four. Nine. What's so special about it? Is there some sort of pattern that I'm missing? the jump between each digit it goes three then one then five then eight then six then two then three again i was thinking that all the jumps are each number but no um something about reading it backwards reading upside down no i i don't know then i unfortunately don't know that one do you guys know Nope. Okay, well, let's take a look at the answer. So the answer says it has each number 0 through 9 listed in alphabetical order. Alphabetical order. Alphabetical, alphabetical order. So 8 is E, then F for 5 and 4, N for 9, O for 1, S for 7 and 6, D for 3 and and said for zero no way that's really good i like that i really like that one and i really hope that you guys did like this video if you did then be sure to drop a big thumbs up on tonight's video um, i do want to apologize if you can hear like uh, birds throughout because i am filming this during the day but uh, let me know if you want to see more of this in the comments and uh, other than that, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Good night. so much.